It begins simply, as simple as chocolate chip pancakes and the turkey platter at the Moab Denny's for the fourth year in a row. Oh, sure, it's mired in preparations, gathering beta, prepping boats, checking weather and flows, finding out who is bringing what, and will it all fit into our dry bags. But adventure can have a benign, innocent quality at its beginning that is completely ignorant of what is to come. That is not to say that an epic will ensue, nor is it that adventure has to be grand in scale. For what makes adventure is what goes on on the inside, in the head, the heart, and in the soul. And when you take one raft, seven boats, one stand-up board, two dogs, two kids, three families, and two containers of the most anxiously awaited homemade cookies ever, what else could there possibly be than a great Thanksgiving Colorado River adventure? The afternoon launch with full bellies and full boats is less than a magnanimous start. Our speed to some degree mirrors the Moab daily on which we are about to embark, slow, wandering, comfortable, with no bit of anxiousness. This afternoon is a simple settling into the river, running a few small rapids and managing our wide range of boats and boaters. Coming on the heels of my year of teaching in Australia and surfing most days, it's a unanimous decision to put me on the new Jackson Sup, the superficial, though I had never paddled one before. Heather, my girlfriend and climbing partner, is heading downriver for the first time in a kayak. With two rapids to negotiate day one, she paddles a nice, stable Rogue 10, as much for her mind as her skill. The girls, Abby, 8, and Dorothy, 12, are in their usual boats, a fun one and a Zen 55, respectively, while Peter, Greg, and Cynthia are all trying out the Jackson, Karma, Zen, and the 2013 Superstar for a little off-season discovery. Kathy? She and the dogs are in the supporting raft, with enough gear for the Amazon and cookies for a week. Who would have guessed we were only doing an overnighter? But if we did get swept down the eight miles of flat water, through Moab, into the desert, and down into Cataract Canyon, we'd at least be well fed. On the river we laugh and splash, float and play, watching the afternoon shadows push the waning light up and over the high canyon walls. Only upriver to the north, toward Onion Creek, does the red glow still hang on the cliff walls. It's funny how loud a rapid is when the river goes from flat to flow. Maybe it is in part the canyon walls, maybe the onset of darkness, maybe the 40 degrees and dropping, but somehow this class two has my attention and intense interest in not swimming, not now. But once I watch our little superstars, Abby and Dorothy, navigate it with whimsical abandon, and then Heather with her newfound ease, I feel that maybe I can get to dinner basically warm and dry. Sure, that is not the kind of ambition and goal of a great adventurer, but tonight, it is certainly good enough for me. An hour later, the moon has taken over the waning sunlight. A fire burns on the beach, with Abby and Dorothy poking at it with sticks. Greg is still in his dry suit, cooking the foil-wrapped sweet potatoes over hot coals. Heather is bundled and down, Tucker Dog at her feet. Kathy, beer in hand, is sharing her moments of Lake Powell and a precocious rattlesnake. Peter roves in the shadows, just outside of the firelight, setting up photos and sneaking candid shots. Cynthia is back and forth from tent to table, creating a spread fit for, well, Thanksgiving. By the time we've gorged on thick steaks and sweet potatoes over the open fire, we are left with little energy, each of us. Just enough to roast a few marshmallows and raise their flaming shells to the starry sky. Nibble down a nearly frozen homemade cookie. Sing a couple songs to the dwindling embers. And ultimately, let laughter give way to silent fire stares and a cold moonlit night. I'd like to think that we choose our dreams but maybe it is that our dreams choose us. We close our eyes in sleep only to open them in imagination. On the river, the waking and the sleeping are shared, one almost indistinguishable from the other. For Peter and Kathy to watch their daughter line up a rapid or paddle the sup, tucker in tow, this can only be the stuff of dreams. For Cynthia and Greg to watch Dorothy building the most grand of castles at our sandy lunch stop, wishes could not offer more. For me to watch Heather, who only months ago started rock climbing and now is navigating the Colorado River as a kayaker, I am in awe and appreciation. 
It is a day like many other days on the river, a cold start, a warm stretch, and hypothermic fingers by sundown. The elation of getting on the water is equaled by the joy of getting off the water, and everything in between is the stuff of the next round of stories. It's never about perfection. Frozen gloves and booties defrosted over a camp stove burner and coffee. Abby and Dorothy both wanting to sup and me not fitting to either of their boats. The raft is one monster to unpack, and the amount of time rigging and unrigging is almost equal to the time paddling it. Anxious dogs often bark and whine, a lot. And even happy, loved, adventurous girls sometimes shed tears. The river, however, worries not and takes us all. She gives us space for laughter and tears, for packs of ten or families of three. It keeps us together, but allows us our own individual adventure inside. And as we eddy out of the last rapid at Big Bend, cold, tired, hungry, done, she continues on in simple reflection. She knows we'll return next year to her waves and her shores. Abby will be rolling, Dorothy carving up the rapids. Peter and Greg will be bow stalling till they're blue in the face, literally. Cynthia and Kathy will be pushing themselves in and out of her ever-changing currents. Heather will be paddling her own rig with bolstered confidence from a year under her skirt. The dogs will be pacing the raft in anticipation of the shore, or pacing the shore in anticipation of the raft. And I will be bringing up the rear, paddle in hand, stance solid, undaunted by class three, sup-adventurer extraordinaire. Well, that, or we'll float the Moab daily once again. I'm sure we will find beauty and joy either way.